on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. With one day to go before the official announcement, let's see what Coindesk has to say about how traders are preparing themselves for the Bitcoin ETF. Tunnelbear is the simple VPN app that makes it easy to browse the web privately and enjoy a more open and secure internet experience. Try Tunnelbear for free by checking out the link in the video description below. Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I am your host, Chris Coney. Today is the 9th of March 2017. There are no announcements today, so let's get right into the market roundup. So straight over to coinmarketcap.com, not much green in the top 20 today, but with a 3.05% gain, Dash comes out as the biggest winner. And it's still ranked there third overall by market cap, and it's around $86 million in market cap higher than Ripple, which is ranked number four. Now Dash coin is now worth $46.38. Now Litecoin has won back that fifth position, fifth spot from Monero, uh, since Monero has shaved 5.51% today, putting $10 million of market cap behind Litecoin. But Litecoin still has $140 million of ground to make up in order to catch Dash. Now, after a nice run recently, NEM takes the biggest uh, loser today, biggest beating, with a double digit loss. And it's lost 10.87% today. That means a NEM coin is now worth. Well, barely one cent, but it manages to hold its rank at number eight by market cap. Now, honorable mention today goes to the Arcade token down here in 16th position. This is a new entrant. Now, there's no percentage displayed here because it's um, there's no basis for comparison. The Arcade token relates to the Ethereum app known as Arcade City, which was started by this ex-Uber driver. I believe he was from Austin. And he suddenly was no longer allowed to offer rides in Austin, you know, because Uber gets um, a lot of heat from local taxi companies and, and so on. But that gave this guy the inspiration to begin a decentralized Uber project on Ethereum, which became Arcade City. That has now grown into, well, it's grown beyond just a decentralized Uber project and is developing towards more of a, a decentralized app for all kinds of sharing, which will include things like competing with Airbnb, and so on. Now, this is the Ethereum app that I've personally watched ever since its inception, and I very much want this to be a success. I don't actually own any arcade tokens. I just want the app to be available for people to use. In any case, an arcade token is sitting here at $2.62, so we'll see how it moves if it manages to remain in the top 20 over the coming days. Over to Bitcoin Wisdom then for the chart reading. So when I did my analysis yesterday, the candle uh, from yesterday obviously was still forming, and now we see the full picture. The day actually closed near the low, which is that new trend line that I drew. And I took the opportunity and picked up a bit of Bitcoin this morning at 11.70, and it was especially when I saw this chart. Now one thing I'll probably do with that is hold on to it until Bitcoin goes back up, and then I'll take that opportunity to exchange it for something like Monero, especially if Monero is down on that day when Bitcoin is up. The only other thing I'll say today about the Bitcoin price is to do with today's candle. The price is stuck in a bit of a spider's web here. It's struggling around that 1163 mark and that new trend line that we drew yesterday. It's actually stuck right under it at the moment. So the price may not be done falling yet. You see how it's stuck right where that the two lines cross. We've got that 100% Fibonacci retracement line at 1163, which coincides with the previous all time high from 2013. But then we have that new steep trend line that I've drawn there, and it's stuck underneath that. So the price broke down below it, and now it's butting up against where those two lines cross. So those are two lines of resistance that are working together, if you like. Now, add to that the fact that we are one day away from finding out if the Bitcoin EFT is going to be approved and we could be in for some wild price movements both back and forth. 
I've actually elected to talk about the Bitcoin ETF today, A, because the announcement should be coming tomorrow, and B, because I saw quite a few requests to talk about it in the comments, so I'm happy to oblige. So a quick check-in with Segwit on Litecoin. We're at 21.54% today, and that's down ever so slightly from yesterday, and that's two days on the trot now that we've lost support on Litecoin. It puts the projected activation date at the 24th of June, which is still well within the deadline. But what's more interesting today is what's going on with the Bitcoin SegWit stuff. So over on CoinDance, we have this data about the various scaling solutions, Bitcoin Limited and SegWit. One thing you'll notice from today is that they've switched places. Normally SegWit is listed as the first one in the first row there, and then it goes Bitcoin Unlimited and then the eight megabyte blocks. And I looked at it this morning and thought, oh yeah, it looks pretty normal. Then I realized that this is ranking it in order of support. Now, the fact that Bitcoin Unlimited is the one listed at the top means it's actually got the most support. So let me give you some specifics here. As of today, Bitcoin Unlimited is listed here as having 25.7% support and SegWit is 25.2. So actually, uh, based on the last week's worth of blocks mined, Bitcoin Unlimited now is ahead of SegWit. And this is why I said to you that I should start tracking the progress of Bitcoin Unlimited because it just seemed always to be lagging behind SegWit, but now it's a serious competitor. I'm not saying it's a serious competitor from a technical point of view, I'm just purely looking at minor supports. Uh, so they're now, on, they're now on parity, Bitcoin Unlimited is edged ahead. In fact, since I started tracking it yesterday, Bitcoin Unlimited has gained an extra 2% minor support today and SegWit has lost 1%, so there's the tipping point there. So I'm interested to see if this trend towards Bitcoin Unlimited support continues. So in terms of the news then, I've turned to Coindesk, coindesk.com, for this article entitled, How Bitcoin Traders Are Preparing for the SEC's ETF Decision. Now that's a little bit of an alphabet soup, but SEC, that's the Securities and Exchange Commission in the United States, and ETF, which we'll get into in a minute, is an exchange traded fund. So let me give you some opening remarks here. You may, you may be wondering why on earth I haven't covered or spoken about the Bitcoin ETF before now. Well, I kind of did that intentionally, to be honest, because for someone inside the Bitcoin economy like me, the whole thing just seems like a daft idea. I mean, of course, I have kept my eye on it because, you know, the price movements are largely based on perception more than reality. So I'd be a fool not to take into consideration what everyone else is doing. Um, the bottom line is that traders on both sides will have have their expectations already set and their fingers on the trigger. You know, once once the announcement is made, their expectations on either side will either be confirmed or shattered, and then everyone's going to pull the appropriate trigger. Price volatility will definitely follow until all that emotion is shaken out of the system. And that's why I took the opportunity and bought some Bitcoin today. I wouldn't advise anyone to be jumping in and out of the market when it's going crazy. That's just not smart. You know, that's gambling. That's not investing. I personally will now be sitting on my hands until everything calms down. Then I'll redo my analysis and decide what to do next. In the meantime, though, I'm just going to treat it like I would watching a fireworks show, you know, out of harm's way, observing it purely for its entertainment value. And of course, you can choose to do what you will. But let's see what the article itself says here. It says the world's Bitcoin traders are getting ready for this week's decision by the US Securities and Exchange Commission on an exchange traded fund tied to the digital currency. The agency is expected to make its decision by Friday. So Friday, that's tomorrow. But from what I understand, they could have made the announcement before this. It's just that for some reason they've chosen to wait until the very last minute. Now, if you sat there thinking, hold on, what on earth is an ETF? It's basically an investment that's based on some kind of underlying value. It's a way of investing in an asset without having to own, hold, or manage the asset directly. Now, this is where I think it's daft because a gold EFT might make sense because gold has to be physically transported, it has to be insured, and it has to be secured. Now that's all expensive stuff, so it makes more sense to just invest in an ETF and then have a share of some of those gold holdings. So it's basically just a paper investment. You're buying a certificate that says that you legally own this portion of the ETF 
and then you get the benefit of the gains in the price, gold in this case, and also the pain if it loses and lose money. Now the idea of a Bitcoin ETF though, to me personally, makes very little sense. The most obvious reason being that investors do not have custody of the Bitcoin that they're investing in. Now that's the first rule of Fight Club, I mean Bitcoin. Not your keys, not your money, right? Plus, there are going to be fees levied by the ETF managers, which will come straight out of the profits if you make money, and straight out of your pocket if you lose money. In truth, you'd be much better off buying and holding the Bitcoin yourself, so why would anyone be crazy enough to invest in a Bitcoin ETF? Well, the simple answer to that is because investing in a Bitcoin ETF requires no effort. It doesn't require you to learn how to use Bitcoin, it doesn't require you to subscribe to the notion of personal responsibility for your money, and so on. You just hear about Bitcoin being a high performance asset over the last two years, and you just want to be able to call your broker, tell them you want to invest in Bitcoin, and then put the phone down. Does it cost you? Well, of course it costs you. But what you get for that fee is the ability to invest in Bitcoin just by making a phone call. Now, to some people, that's worth paying for because it's preferable to the alternative, which is getting a Bitcoin wallet, learning how to use it, learning how to figure out how to buy some Bitcoin. Some people just don't want to do it. So then it says here in the orange, investor and entrepreneur Vinny Lingham argued that while there's little indication as to which direction the agency will go, the potential for volatility is virtually guaranteed. Now this is what I was referring to in my opening remarks. There will already be expectations on both sides. So whichever way it goes, one side will be happy and one side will be sad. Therefore, whatever happens, the, nu the two nuclear missiles of greed and fear are armed and ready on both sides. And that's why we're guaranteed to see some kind of volatility. So then further down here, it says, prepare for the worst, question mark. While many traders indicate that they have braced themselves for volatility, some revealed that they have specific plans in case Bitcoin prices plunge following the SEC's decision. At least one market trader has suggested that they are getting ready for the worst case scenario, which would be a no decision followed by a sharp drop. Now I did say that I was going to sit and watch the volatility on the sidelines. However, if we see a massive drop in the price, I'm quite likely to start buying because Moving on to the green bit, it says here, cryptocurrency fund manager Jacob Eliasoff took a somewhat different point of view, suggesting that he would look for opportunities amidst any possible price decline. Quote, I'm waiting to do some buying on any major dip. I don't think we've seen the last of that $1,000 mark. So thanks for joining me today, guys. If you liked this episode, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Please leave me a comment below with some feedback and get subscribed. And please support the Cryptoverse and boost cryptocurrency adoption by going to cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast and becoming a patron. From just a few dollars a month, you can secure Cryptoversity's future, get unlimited access to all Cryptoversity courses, and access a private patrons only chat group where you get direct access to me. That is all for today, guys. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.